Circle 7 Productions, uh, best known uh, for book trailers and multimedia, and we also do uh, online marketing. And I own Readers Entertainment. Readers Entertainment is uh, <coughs> different in that it's not really a, a reader community site, but it's like the Associated Press for books and publishing. And so we put up articles and guest blogs and multimedia on Readers Entertainment, and we license that material for free to, uh, to bloggers and other, uh, other news sites. So a little bit different type of a, uh, of a site. Anybody here who's interested in guest blogging can always hit me up later because uh, we are a Google News approved site, which means I have to have new content on my site every single solitary day. <laughs> but that's always exciting. Uh, I'm also an author. Uh, I wrote a book this year with uh, Barbara Bay of Publishers Weekly, and it's uh, a marketing book, hit number three on Amazon for business books. And uh, the title of that is Book Marketing, Book Trailers, and Author Etiquette in a Nutshell. It's a long, uh, long name, but easy to look, look me up under my name. Um, we're going to talk about the power of multimedia in marketing. And I want to start, if you could take out paper and pen, we're going to, I wanted to do something a little different with this group since there's a small group here. Uh, I want you to actually leave here with something that you can really use. So you're going to, we're going to work together as we go through this <coughs> talk and I'm going to have you do a reader profile. In order to start your marketing, you need to know who you're marketing to. And this is a tool that will be very helpful for you in the end. So, but first let's go ahead and take a look just to um, kind of put in perspective the importance of marketing. Um, you can see by the, by the numbers, Valkers reports, there's over 200,000 ISBNs that have been uh, assigned just in one single year. And so the question is, with this kind of growth from over 130,000 in 2010 to over 200,000 in uh, 2011, how does your book get noticed? Because as somebody had said in one of the previous talks, you know, if you build it, they will come, does not work. Not when you have so many hundreds of thousands of books that are out there and yours is, is just one in a, a sea of books. So I want to talk about, you know, first of all, you have to have a good book. Uh, you know, you need to complete the book, you need to edit the book. Just because you have a book doesn't make it a good book. You have to put a lot of time and effort into it. It's an investment of your skills as a writer. It's an investment of your time. If you've taken the time to complete a book, you're serious about wanting to get some readers to read that. So first you have to have a good book. Uh, then you have to be found, and normally you're going to be found either by physical browsing, so you're in a bookstore and people are looking through the shelves, or maybe it's on a table, or through search online. Those are the two main ways people will discover your book. Uh, then you have to have a compelling reason for somebody to buy your book. Just because it's there and has a decent cover doesn't mean that it's going to be compelling. But it's important to have a good cover. A lot of people, that's what draws them over to the book. They see something compelling on the cover, and they're willing to flip that over and read the back cover copy. Uh, you also have to make it easy for people to obtain your book. Um, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of different things. You know, they'll put it in a PDF and sell it off their website. Uh, they'll have, uh, have it available on Amazon, and so if you don't have a Kindle or you don't have the Amazon app, you're not going to get that book. Uh, but take, you know, you need to think about um, the ease of purchase. Make sure that people can uh, that they know where to go to buy the book, and wherever you have your book uh, put, whether it's going to be Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Or there are a lot of uh, small bookstores that are online as well that you can take advantage of. Make sure that it's easy for your readers to go and get it because, especially for first time authors, you don't want to set your, your reader up to have a bad experience the first time with you. And here's the truth if they have a hard time downloading your book, they'll blame you for it. Doesn't mean it's your fault, but they associate you're the only name on the book, you get the blame. 
So, you know, you want to take a look at, this is kind of the reader experience that we're taking a look at, and that's why we're going to take a look at um, doing a reader profile today. You want to make sure that there are different formats that are available. There's technology, if you have to ask yourself if, if there's going to be technology challenges for individuals. Uh, I have some clients who uh, their target audience are going to be 50 and up. And so when we talk about how are we going to market to those people, we need to think about, you know, these may be people who are not used to being on the internet. And we've even gone so far as to make little instructional videos that we put on her site to help her readers that says, this is how you download to your Nook. And it's actually a little video that shows them how to make that happen. So we knew there would be a barrier to technology and we addressed that on her website. And then she, she comes across as being very helpful to the very people she's hoping will, will purchase her book. So you want to keep in mind any of the challenges in technology. Of course, you, know, you want to make sure that you have the sale, you have a call to action, it's easy to get the book, you have a good book, you've sold the book, and now you have a relationship. Once you have sold the book, you have a relationship with somebody, whoever bought that book. They're going to read your story that you just spent all your time, blood, sweat, and tears, to write for them. That you're hoping, they're, as they're reading it, they feel the same thing you felt when you imagine the story, you imagine these characters in that story, and now you've shared an experience with them, a story, these characters, and you have a relationship with them, which, would, it, which is why it's nice to have social media so that you can continue that relationship, and hopefully when you write another book, you'll have established this relationship with them, they love your book, and now you let them know another one's coming out, and now you're perpetuating um, that relationship and establishing, you're building uh, loyalty and trust with your reader. So the first thing to do that I'd like you to do with your uh, reader profile is to actually write down reader profile. So I want you to go through those steps. Think in your mind the genre of book that you write. And don't think of it from, well, this is the kind of person I am, or this is what I think. Uh, this book is about, or you don't, you want to try and, you know, you, uh, see through the eyes of the reader instead of through your own eyes. So think about, is it going to be primarily female? Will it be primarily male? Are you certain that it's going to be both? Because I'll tell you, the more you can dial in to who your actual reader is, the chances, the chances of sales are going to go up. You want to be real specific. You don't want to just throw something up against the wall and hope it sticks with the wall. So, take, you know, if you, once you decide if it's male or female, if you really truly think it's both, that's okay. But then start thinking about what, what's the age group? Who's going to read it? And if you put 17 to 100, you don't understand the exercise. So I want to make sure that you know you want to get that target. And there's going to be outliers. Maybe the, maybe the reader is probably going to be 25 to 35. If you know it's 25 to 35, when you go to buy ad space or you go to invest your time in marketing, you're, and you're saying, well, should I go Facebook or Twitter? You go back to this reader profile and you say, okay, well, this is the age group. They're probably on Twitter. So the, the more that you can bring that, dial that in, Later on, when we start talking about where you need to put your marketing dollars or what type of marketing you should be using, you should have this reader profile up in your office and keep an eye on it. And it may change. Your books may change. You may evolve. You may write a different type of series. And then you're going to take a look at this reader profile again. So there's, there's a variety of ways to get attention to your book, and we're going to talk about multimedia. Um, I want you to write down any multimedia you are either comfortable with or interested in, because I want you to start the process of considering that multimedia. So what we'll do is you're going to say, this is what I'm interested in, and when we're finished with this reader profile, then we're going to say, well, what would this person be interested in 
And if those two things match up, you know what you're supposed to be using in order to outreach to your, to your reader. Um, these are some stats, and I just want you to see why it's important. This is, this is why multimedia is important. 182 million U.S. Internet users watched online video. 23.2 hours per viewer is the average. Um, mobile video streaming increased by 93% worldwide, 35% in the U.S. 12.6% of website traffic is, has, in, has come from mobile devices. Uh, this, I mean, you can see there's more people on mobile. There's people who are really interested in video. More people are on the internet. And multimedia is how you access those 182 million people. That's how you're going to get to those readers. That's where your outreach is going to is going to go. That's who you can reach with multimedia. Um, so what type of technology do you think readers use? And I want you to put that in your reader profile. So think about who you think is going to look at your book and say, gotta have it. This looks like an interesting story. Is this somebody that you feel is going to watch video? Is this somebody who you think listens to radio maybe more? Somebody who's on the internet a lot? Maybe they're only on the internet on the weekends? These are just questions to ask yourself. So the good news is that multimedia offers, a, it, it really does level the playing field because whether you are Random House or Simon & Schuster, you're a big publisher, uh, or you're a first time self-published uh, author, here's the fact. Readers search for the type of stories that they're interested in, not as a rule according to a specific publisher. So think of yourself, right? You're a reader. When you think, you know, I'd really like to check out a new book, are you, go are you thinking, I need to go see what Random House is putting out right now? <laughs> Probably not doing that. And readers as a rule don't do that either. <clears throat> All they care about is the author, if they like the author, or a certain type of, of book. If you love dragon stories, you love fantasy, you love um, you know, literary books, thrillers, readers are gonna go look for the genre, and then, and then they're gonna think, after genre, they're gonna think, well, what, you know, I like urban fantasy, but I really don't like vampires. What else is out there in urban fantasy? And that's how they're gonna search. And what's great is that means everyone who has a book that has that story that they're searching for has an equal opportunity to sell their book, to impress the reader with the storyline and get them to purchase it. So it could be Random House has something out and that's what they find, but it could be that you as a self-published author are also available on a Google search and they find you. And if you have a compelling story, that's what they buy. So it does. It, it, it's an even playing field. Readers want a good story. They want to learn something. They want to be entertained. They want a book that, that gives them what they want. And that's why we're trying to see through the eyes of a reader. That's what this exercise is about, is to see through their eyes and, and think about how are they finding me. So on your reader profile, what I'd like you to do is think about how would this reader find me using certain search words? So if you know your genre, you should always use that. So if you're going to use, put some keywords up on your website so that people can find your website. Um, if you're putting the keywords up to describe your book because you're on Goodreads or you're on Amazon, you want the genre to be included because that's usually where they start. That is the genre. Then what is your book about? If it's about dragons, then you should have the word dragons in there. If it's about uh, a certain time period, if it's historical, don't just put historical. Put the, the, if it's regency, put, put regency. So you want to start thinking, if my reader loves uh, thrillers, and they like dark thrillers, scary stuff, 
when they go to Google and they're looking for a book, what are they going to type in to find a book they're looking for? Those are the words you want to have to describe your book. So, you know, they have to know that your book exists and that's why we have to have these search terms. Uh, I would say have at least two or three single words and if you have some phrases, a couple of phrases, uh, you know, uh, vamp if it's a vampire story, it could be, you know, teen vamp love triangle. You can all, I'm sure, figure out what will come up on Google for that. But if that's what it's about, just a little synopsis, just that the small phrase is something that you can put in so that people can find you. And you, yeah, question? Then when they search, if you have a phrase like that with several words, if they put in part of the phrase, is it going to pop up? The question is, if they put in part of a phrase, will it pop up? It could, but if you have other people who are using just that part of a phrase um, as, as their search terms, they may come up above you. So more specific, um, the phrase, you know, this, that will determine where your placement is. So you don't want it like so specific, they'll never find you. But for a phrase, you know, three or four words, that's, that's pretty fair. Um, the, the single words are really important for you as well. Um, if they've never heard of your book, they're probably not searching for your website or your Facebook page. If you have a website, you want to use those terms, you want to write about them if you can, and the same with Facebook. You need to have a way to be discovered in search. And knowing who your reader is, when you're building that, you're building those keywords, you're making those sites, and you're making those decisions, always do it from the point of view of the reader. So as you can see here, there's a lot of different types of uh, multimedia. And I, I'm not going to go over every single thing I've written, but I wanted to have that there for you so you can take a look. I will tell you, Google loves video. And if you have a video on your website and somebody who writes something similar to you does not, Google will love you first. <laughs> and, you, and you will place above them. And honestly, you don't have to spend $350 on a video. You don't have to spend $10,000 on a video. You can take a camera like this or take a little flip camera, set it up, have a, a little interview, keep it under a minute. That's about the attention span you're going to get for, for online web video. Keep it under a minute. Have your little pitch. Say something that you feel is going to be um, of interest to the reader. Put it on YouTube. Take the embed code. Put it on your website. That's it. It's that simple. It, it takes you, it'll take you a couple of hours. Most, uh, most of you have laptops and computers. It comes with um, with editing software. You you should be able to edit yourself, but you can also just put it up yourself. With you have your book up there, show the book, show you. You say your little whatever your invitation is, or say whatever your your elevator speech is about the book, and, and that's it. And you go and you put that video up. Don't miss out on the the SEO opportunities of video just because you think you have to pay for it. Whether you pay somebody else to do it or you put it up yourself, Google's still going to love the fact that you have some video up there. Uh, audio, I just want to say, going back to the fact that I have Reader's Entertainment, I also own Reader's Entertainment Radio. We have uh, 80,000 listeners. Anybody here who has a book written already and would like to be interviewed, see me later because I would love to do that for you. Um, and if your book's not out, take, make sure you take my card when it comes out, hit me up. Um, I love to have new authors uh, on the show. Same with podcasts, you can uh, go to SoundCloud. SoundCloud is YouTube for audio. You can put your audio, you can record yourself, say a little, maybe read. I think uh, you know a lot of readers love audiobooks, so you know that that's a good way to go. Take one scene, like a really cool scene out of your book. One thing that, that, that you want to do, you, know, you could read it, but leave it where it's like a teaser. 
And so that people wonder what happens next. That does a couple of things. It will let them hear your, a sample of your author voice, not the voice you talk with, but the voice you write with, because we all have a style. Every author has a style. And, and certain people like certain, certain styles of writing. But read a little, just a little bit of it, and then put that up on SoundCloud, embed it onto your website. Those are nice little extras that you can share. You can also share those things on your Facebook. And those are really easy to do. Uh, apps, um, I can tell you, you know, if unless you have a reason to have an app, if you're a first-time author, I would I would make that one of the last things I do. Because chances are you're gonna have to pay for that. Unless you already know how to make apps. If that's your skill set, that's fantastic. But if you have if you're doing illustrations, like children's books, fantastic way. To, um, to, to reach out to readers. Uh, apps for children's books are hugely popular, especially if you can um, get the illustrations to move a little on the app as they're looking through the book. Uh, and that's fantastic. Uh, there's a site called Jib Jab Kids, and they have some online examples that you can take a look at. Fantastic, very exciting stuff. So SEO, which we've talked about, search engine optimization. <clears throat> which is not really multimedia, but it kind of is. Um, that's where, you're, where you place if you're being searched on Google, Yahoo, Bing, AOL, you know, wherever. What you want to do is you want to be seen organically. You want, you want to be on the first page of Google organically. When I say organically, that means there are people who pay to be on the first page. And you've, you've seen it. It's usually at the top and it has a, it's colored. It's in a bar, it has a, a slight color to it. Those are ads. Somebody paid to be there. In 10 years, I've never had to pay to be on the first page of Google. And we guarantee all of our clients, if they get a video with us, we guarantee they'll be on the first page of Google within a week or we will give them their money back. That's how strongly we believe in the power of video for, for SEO. Websites are still very important to have. You heard me talk yesterday. I'm going to just repeat that. And that is, if you're going to spend your own money, if you're going to spend some money, spend it on your website. If you can do a great, fantastic website on your own, that's wonderful. But if you only have a limited amount of money, spend it on your website. Make sure that your website can be viewed on smartphones. It needs to be compatible to mobile phones, and that hills back to, I showed you those, uh, those statistics on mobile, um, on mobile use. People are, they have their phones, I do it myself. I have an iPhone, I'll be at the doctor's office, or I'm waiting for one of the kids, and I'm sitting there and I'm surfing the net. You know, people get bored, and that's, that they call it weight warping, weight warping, and they're just killing some time. Well, if they, if they're interested in you, and they have time to kill, and all they have is their smartphone at that time, this goes back to you want it to be easy for readers to, to find you and discover you. You want to make sure that they can see your website if they're, if they're surfing for it. So your website should be uh, mobile friendly. It should be, um, you should make sure that your, your um, social media is included. Not just where to find you on Facebook, but you can actually fix it so that, let's say you have a blog on your website, when you put a blog up, people can like it on their own Facebook. So you put, a, it has the little Facebook button on it, it says like us on, you know, like this article, and they can click it, it takes it to their Facebook, and it has your link, and then they can comment about why they're sharing it, and it goes on their wall, and it's shared with their people. Is that free to do that? It is, it's it a plugin. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I do recommend WordPress. And I, you'll probably hear a lot of people recommend that because those plugins are—they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And most um, uh, most of those types of sites uh, you can see on mobile phones. It's just part of WordPress. Um, so you know, the websites make sure that 
you have a, a reactive website, meaning that you can see it easily, that uh, that is scalable, uh, that and that you people can interact with it. If you want people to talk about you on their Facebook to their hundreds or thousands of followers, you're going to fix it so that they they have that Facebook button and Twitter. You also want to have Twitter and and their WordPress has a, a plugin that has like 30 to 50 uh, different sites that it does that. So if people are hating on Facebook, and a lot of people do, but they're on StumbleUpon, then people can go share it there. You want to make it super easy for other people to market you. And it can be as simple as making sure that that goes up on your website. Uh, so on your reader profile, I want you to think about how are your readers consuming entertainment right now? Because you are entertainers. Some of you are educators. I know it's according to what you write. Um, where else are they online? Is it social media, radio, or book sites? So when you're taking a look at your reader profile that you're working on, think about what, what are these people doing? If you're, if you're writing fantasy, they're probably gamers. Okay, so just think about what these people are doing. Um, thrillers. A lot of professional people are reading thrillers, they're probably on LinkedIn. That's a really good reason to be on that site, other than just because the site exists. So think about the type of reader you have and where, you're, where they're going to consume their information or be entertained. Because later on, when you make your decisions where you're going to spend your marketing dollars or where you're going to spend your time, because you're going to either spend in money or in time, then you take a look at that profile and it'll help you zero in on where to spend that time or money. You want to make sure, and we just talked about this a little bit, um, make sure that it's really easy for people to find you. Um, if you are on Amazon, make sure you have your Amazon author page fill it out. I can't tell you how many times that I've gone and I liked the idea of a book and I'll go check out the author and there's hardly any information there. I've even seen some that doesn't even have the, the author's picture up. The more that somebody can the, find out about you, the, the closer they are to buying that book. So if I'm interested enough to, I, I found it on Amazon or I found it on Barnes and Noble or wherever, but I'm not 100% sold on it. I'm going to look for your website, or I'm going, to, I'm going to search for you and see if you've written other things, or I'm probably searching to see if there are book reviews or if other people have talked about you or your books. You want to make it super easy for people to find out information. On your website, which is your home base, you want to be collecting people's email addresses. You do that by offering uh, a newsletter. And it could be, you, you can tell them, I'm only going to contact you when I have a book coming out. Or I'm only going to contact you once a month. However, you, you, know, you decide that's going to work for you. But then you collect those addresses. That way, if your Facebook ever gets hacked, or if Facebook ever decides to go the way of MySpace, you will still have access to those people. If you only go on Facebook and you have 100,000 likes, and I hope you all end up with that, but Facebook goes under, how will you ever refine those people? You must have your website available and try and collect as many of those email addresses as you can, but by offering interesting content to them. That's how you kind of purchase their email address, is by offering them something in return. Uh, you know, be on the social sites, be on LinkedIn, be on Facebook, whatever is appropriate to your, <clears throat> to what you like to do, or appropriate to what your reader profile uh, is and says where your readers are going to be. So that is that's the end of that. But I want to go ahead and. Uh, talk a little bit more about the reader profile. This is where you're going to start for your marketing. You're going to take a look at the profile that you just created. You're going to try and come up with, you know, what does this person look like? Is this person a uh, professional? If they are a professional, let's say they're an attorney. 
How are they, how are they consuming their information? Probably a newspaper or a magazine. So then you should be on bookmarking sites. Bookmarking sites are like StumbleUpon, Dig. Um, if you Google bookmarking sites, you'll get a whole bunch of them. Uh, usually people who are professionals, let's say between the ages of 30 and retirement age, they like to have their news. And these are news aggregators. And, but they get to choose the kind of news that comes to them that's the benefit of the site. You can actually put information on those bookmarking sites about yourself and your book. That's how you're going to reach that particular reader profile person. Um, there are other sites that are for, uh, for older individuals, or let's say uh, if you write inspirationals, think about Christian communities. You know, there's God too. There, I mean, there's there's a, a multitude of sites that are specific to uh, to Christians, and if that's who's going to read your book, then you should look for those communities. Just being on Facebook may not be enough. Facebook itself may not be where you need to be if that's not where you think those readers are going to be. You might not have to put any time into Facebook at all. Maybe it's going to be Twitter. There are a lot of communities, and the more that you see uh, people go online. People love to congregate. They love community. We love, you know, we, we love to talk to like-minded people. There's a community for just about everything you can think of. Google it. Find out where those communities are. Is it someplace that you can join? Maybe it's a blog site and you could offer to be a guest on their blog. Look for those communities. So when you're doing your reader profile, if that person is a gamer, um, you know, you may want to take a look at the gaming communities that are open to you so that you can reach out to them. So you can really dial in to specific communities and you can use multimedia according to, uh, you know, the, the kind of community. There are a lot of communities that love video. Gamer sites would be one of those. They love to see, <clears throat> they love to see video, they love to be entertained. If it's nonfiction, there's, uh, there's teacher tube. There's a lot of mom sites, a lot of parent sites. Uh, you know, take a look at uh, that community and how people are interacting with one another and what seems to be popular and match up the multimedia of your choice. Or if it's not multimedia, maybe it's blogging, maybe it's writing some guest articles. But investigate that community. Spend a little time learning about the community and then, and then join up with them. And you want to always, always give first. Before you get on there and you put, I have a book, I have a book. And, and you should let people know that you're an author because that's, that's a part of who you are. So if you're on there and you talk about that, that's not, I mean, people talk about their jobs all the time. You know, it's, it's, it's a matter of pride. It's what I do. So it's fine to talk about that. But if you go on there and all you're talking about is that, it turns people off. It really does. When you go on to a, a new community, what you want to do is, like I said, give first. Put up something interesting. Share interesting information. Maybe it's uh, links to, uh, to, to other articles, but that you think the community will be interested in. And maybe you did some research, and you could say, when I wrote my book, I researched this, and I, I just thought it was so interesting. So you're not saying buy my book, but now you, people know you have a book. And that's a way for you to give to them uh, before you say, well, you know, here's the link to my book, uh, you know, check it out. I think you'll like it. So um, I hope that, you know, you'll be able to take the, uh, the, the reader profiles and spend a little bit more time than what we did just here, but have an idea of trying to see through the eyes of the reader in order to make your marketing decisions. Take a look at what really appeals to you, what you would like to do, and that will help you make some of your marketing decisions. But at the end of the day, the message that I want to make sure that you have is that multimedia is very important. And every single year you saw those statistics, more and more people are going digital. <coughs> They're online. They have apps. They have smartphones. So you want to make sure that you're at least aware of options of how you can reach out to those people in a way that they enjoy. Um, I 
can take questions. Anybody have questions? Do you have an example of a book trailer? I do have an example. Can you show us one? Sure, I can. Yay. It just so happens. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to hear it. Gideon Davis is a peacemaker, sworn to not violence, sent by the president to bring in a rogue U.S. operative who has become a terrorist of deadly proportions. Somewhere in the South China Sea sits the Alamos, a state-of-the-art deep-sea oil platform, like a ticking time bomb. The terrorist plan to seize the rig could start a war that would change the course of history. Gideon's mission is simple, stop him at any cost. So why send a peacemaker to deal with a devil? Because this devil is his brother. <laughs> Gideon's war. To keep the peace, he has to start a war. producer of X-Files, 24, a lot of um, uh, well-known <coughs> shows. That was Dennis Haysbert who did the voiceover for us. He's the Allstate guy. Yeah. Nice guy. Great voice. Nice guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, Howard Gordon is actually a super, super nice guy. That was his very first book, though. He, he just started writing thrillers. And um, you would think he'd do his own book trailer, but uh, instead he hired us. So that was nice of him. But, um, so he has a very, a very specific situation. Um, he was able to get Fox to give us all that footage. All the B-roll footage never used, that, that you never saw from 24, was given to us to use. So that was kind of nice. But we do have some that, uh, that we created the entire thing. Without the connections. Without the connections? <laughs> no. Yeah. The scene at St. Margaret's Cathedral is shocking. And it's only a matter of time before a depraved killer will purge this church of all its sins. The enemy's detectives prevent Sandy and Antoya or the race against time to stop a raging killer bent on exacting his own unholy justice. Lisa Jackson, straight to the heart of suspense. Okay. That's so, wonderful. Thank you. So those are, uh, you know, the higher end videos, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so, so let's say, if some, if you're hired to make a book trailer from start to finish, about how long does it take? Things like, let's say we want to use a certain song. Like, will you take care of, you know, or music? Like, how does it work? So the process for book trailer is going to depend on a lot of different factors. How long? How long? Um, you know, when when do you need it by? Right. Uh, what your budget is and what your goals are. And you know, we have people who come to us. We actually have videos that start at three hundred and fifty dollars. And, uh, and all of our videos come with distribution. And even, even if you make your own video, we do distribution. Um, most everybody in New York, whether they hire us to make the video or not, will use us for distribution because no one has a bigger distribution outlet than we do. But for $350, 7,000 librarians will take a look at your book and determine whether or not they'll buy that for their libraries. Wow. So it's a really nice... It's a good it's return a good on investment. investment. <laughs> it's a good investment. And if you've never done video, don't go spend, you know, Howard's could spend a lot of money, you know, um, but not everybody can. But for $350, if you know what you're going to do with it, 
then, then that it is. It's, it's actually not a lot of money if you think about 7,000 librarians, sure. 250 independent booksellers. We can guarantee it goes up on Barnes & Noble if, you, if your book is on Barnes & Noble because we have contracts with those people because I have 200 clients. So it's easy for me to negotiate that stuff. Um, we work with National Geographic and you know I get to go in and, and make deals saying, I'll give you National Geographic stuff if you take all my other stuff. So you know that's kind of how we work. And we do not differentiate between a number one New York Times bestseller, and we do work with a lot of those, and a brand new self-published. So you kind of are, instead of guilty by association, you benefit by association. So you have Lisa Jackson, who is a best-selling author, and um, people have read her, but people, most readers read more than one book a year. And her videos up there um, on the different sites, but we do a lot of genre-specific distribution. So when they're done with hers, they're going to say, well, what else is out there? And if you're writing a thriller and it's up there too, that's where they're going to go. They're going to go and take a look, well, who else might have something that I want? Yeah. What's the average time span that it would take you to produce a one-minute uh, trailer? Uh, for live production, you're looking at six to eight weeks, according to the complexity. Um, if it has some kind of um, special effect, and I'll, I'll, let me show you. This was, this has um, a couple of special effects in it, but most of it's done with footage, and this took two weeks to do. And instead of voiceover, it's done with text. Okay, you're hired. No, this is a two thousand dollar trailer. I just want to know how much. Right. Can right. hey, you yeah. show us a two hundred fifty dollar one? You know what? Let me see. It's yeah. <laughs> a cheap one. <laughs> if I can get, if I can get on, if I can get online, let me see if I can get online. See if it lets me. I bet the three fifty will be good too. Uh, yeah, they are. But now it's called a cover story. Here's the here's the caveat sure. to that. We take your book cover, and we'll take it in layers, and we do something creative with it. It's one picture. That's how we can do it for 350, and still give you distribution. So and it's something you, to look at. It's, it's a video to look at. It's a video to yeah. look at. It really is for outreach, mm -hmm. and it's more important to have the text or the voiceover, yeah. um, is because you only have one picture. Now, if you have, and I've seen some some covers that, quite frankly, I would never show on a video. Uh, but then I've also seen covers that are just, there's lots to them, uh, lots of interesting things to them, or they're really tied into what the storyline's going to be, or whatever we're going to say. Those, those are really good, those, those ones. Uh -huh. Do you do covers? Yes, we can do covers as well. Yes. Uh, we do, and we do um, social media marketing. We do a lot of stuff. This is, just happens to be what we're best known for. Um, Anybody remember what he said the password was? Yeah. Web. Uh, uh, that's, one 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 you're, you're, that's not where you would put that in. I think you're already yes, online. Yes, I where she would put it in. No, yes, it is one, two, three, because four, that five. is insight, and it would oh, say you would not open if it were. You're right. Just go ahead and type in the website into the browser, and okay. it looks like you're already online. I'm sorry. So is it bad to say in your trailer that you're a New York Times bestseller if you're actually not? Can you lie? <laughs> that would be bad. Can you get in trouble? That would be bad. That's David Morrell. And surely there is somewhere between $350 and $2,000 that you could land if your budget were... Yes. You know... I'm willing to spend a little more than 350 but not quite 2000 Right. We have different packages, and we can there also we script yeah. to yeah. budget. So um, if, if you have between you know, the basic package and the intermediate package, 
um, that we could do something custom for you according to what your budget is. This is um, a cover screen. You have an extra 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the movies. The movies 25, are 25. James Rollins did a screen of It's because I did like 20 of them for him. And that's not included, uh, but everything I do for Jim has the same intro because um, we do branding for him. Who writes the copy? I heard you on the load. Um, we have we have four script writers that are on staff. Some uh, some writers will uh, some authors will want to write their own, so we give them the formula. There's only so many words uh, in the whole thing, so many words per line in order to keep it into a 90 second or less video. So, you know, if you want to write your own, we can certainly give you the parameters, but uh, we have a lot of award-winning um, script writers on staff to and do that. That would come with the three things. It does, it okay. does come, yes. And um, <clears throat> we're, we're really, uh, we really like to work with people as much as they like to work with us. Some people want to just say, like Jim just says, I don't want to see the script, I don't want to see anything. All I want to see is when it's done, because he doesn't have time. <laughs> but then I'll, you know, work with someone else, Christine Fian or um, Lisa Jackson, and they they want to be a part of it along the process. So we write a script, and it goes out to the author. The author has a, a, a chance to make any changes or say I don't like that. Try this instead. So obviously you read the book. Read the book. Mm -hmm. Read the book. Uh, it helps. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but. The, but the um, what I want to make sure you understand is that the author can be involved. We don't just you know go and do this and give it to you and hope that you like it. It doesn't work that way. You approve the script, and then you will get a video draft, and you can have two rounds of edits. And a round, a round of edits could be 20 edits, as long as you submit it in a single request. So one email, however many edits, that's a round. And we change it and send it back, and you get another round. So you have lots of opportunities to ask wow. for changes. Yeah. Amazing information. So, and uh, we have about, uh, we have 23 people on staff, 13 production partners uh, all across the United States. And Sheila, again, where are you based? I live in Mount Sterling now, um, but our main studio is in California, where that's where I'm from. We have, um, we have studios in Arizona, we have studios in, um, Michigan, Florida, New York. Uh, so you know we have a lot of different people because it can be done remotely. Yeah, great. Um, any other questions? Do you have cards? I have lots of cards. Okay. Yes. So all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.